This week's road trip starts out in Pateley Bridge and heads south, travelling via East Anglia to the West Country and concluding in the Sirencester auction. This leg kicks off in Bedfordshire at Woburn and heads for that final auction in Sirencester. Woburn, sometimes pronounced Woburn, has been burned down and rebuilt three times, once by the Cavaliers during the Civil War. The last fire was in 1724, so although it's over a 1,000 years old, much of the village is Georgian. Hey, James, here we are, last, last leg. Where's the shop? Right in front of your eyes, James. <laughs> so, here we go, you're going first. This is Woburn's old town hall, now full of antiques, and Anita has grabbed the dealer, Elvin, for a first peek in those cabinets. In these little albums of photographs, the men are so solemn looking. He's not too bad. Yeah, well, he's not. He wouldn't have turned him down. He's not. No, I don't think he's my type. Isn't he? Well, she's definitely not my type. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that. Yeah. Well, we're asking forty-five pound for that. So well, what if I say thirty-five? Because I should say forty, but thirty-five. Uh -huh. What I'm looking to. What we'd be looking to pay for that is nearer about 20 no on chance. that. No chance. Is there no chance on that? No chance. I will go to £30, 30 pound for it, because I'm feeling that... Yeah. You, you... Because I like it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when I think of £30, it, it, pound, you it, it, should make a few quid out of it. There was another wee thing here, which isn't a very expensive... Anita's getting close. Now, what's James up to in Elvin's cupboard? He said he'd bought some new bits and bobs. Oh, that's an interesting thing. That was Chinese. The massive market at the moment in silver is in China. Chinese silver is so rare that it is making way above scrap. Look at this little thing. I need to bought one of these earlier on. Um, a little Georgian uh, toothpick case. Open it up. Has a little mirror inside so you can see that you haven't got spinach between your teeth, which I have to say, something I should probably use more often. Um, but there is the original Georgian little silver toothpick. And what would you have on the other end of a toothpick but an ear spatula? So you would delve that all the way down in your ear and come out with a great big wadge of wax and put it directly back in the box that you... <laughs> You're going to pick your teeth with later on. I mean, really. The Georgians were also very fond of their ivory. But remember, the trade in ivory has been strictly controlled by the CITES International Agreement of 1947. I'm not sure whether that is actually copper or gold. So if you've got something that you're thinking is might be gold or gold-plated, if you rub it, the copper starts to smell. So, oh, that smells of copper. Unfortunately, it's not gold. It would have been nice. But if in doubt, give it a rub. Let's leave him to it, shall we? Because Anita's deal seems to have progressed. Now, there's a page turner involved. We've got 34 on the page turner. I say 50 for the two. 50 for the two is not bad. It's not bad at all, no. They're nice things. We don't have to apologise for them. Yeah, that's right. And I like them. Yeah. I'm really tempted. <laughs> I'm really tempted. I'm really oh, tempted. I, mean, I can't go for them anytime. I was trying to be modest. I, is there any? Is there any further movement? Is there? I'm is sorry, there a, a tweak of a movement? I'm. I'm. No, I'm very sorry. No, I'm going to be very hard. Fifty pounds. You're time. not being very hard. You're being very generous, and it's a deal. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Thank you very much. Elvin, go and see what James is rubbing up in your cupboard. I see you found the bits and pieces I, was, I mentioned that were yeah. in here. Thank yeah. you. I mean, obviously, Georgians, yeah. 18th century, nice thing. Yeah. Um, how much could it be? Uh, well, I really wanted £35 for it. We've got a little bit of gold on it, of course. Well, I think it's brass, or copper, yeah. rather. Because I gave it a good old... If you rub... Just smell that, look. Yeah, it, it is, actually, I know. It is copper, isn't it? <laughs> it's copper. <laughs> I'd have to watch you. <laughs> right. Well, I thought you might fall for it. <laughs> How much is the napkin ring? Chinese one. Yep. £50. Pounds. Is it? Is it yeah. that much? It is Chinese. Mm. Late 19th, early 20th century, isn't it? And you know what the yeah. market is for that sort of thing. What, what could you do on it? 
I'll let you have it for 40. 40. Yeah, but no, I'm not going to bend you less. It's still a bit far for me. Something else? Is he bulk buying here? You can have that for a tenner. A tenner. The silver pencil cover is ten pounds. Um, just, what would that be? Um, twenty-five. I would price that. You can have it for twenty if it helps you. And the silver match case is twenty pounds. How much is the napkin ring? Uh, well, it is a silver one. It is, isn't yeah, it? yeah, a tenner. So we've got a cheap napkin ring, a silver pencil holder, and a match case, plus the Chinese napkin ring and the toothpick case. Cool. It comes to one hundred and five pounds as a parcel. All, all of that? Yeah, £100 if you take them all. Let's give another fiver. Ooh, cogs are whirring. I'm thinking, how about 90 the lot? It's, the it's, it's against my better judgement, but OK. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <whistles> that was quite something. Now, time to find Anita and whisk her off. Beetling from Woburn to nearby Buckingham, where Anita is heading directly to jail without picking up 200. Let's hope they don't keep me in too long. <laughs> Built in 1748 and later used as a police station, fire station, and even an antique shop, the old jail has, since the 90s, been a museum. So, Tony, these are the prison cells. They had the original 12 cells. And this chap here, would he have been the jailer? He's an old-fashioned peeler. Right, right, a bobby. Yes, in fact, this man was the, the superintendent. But Anita's here to see the exhibition dedicated to Flora Thompson, one of the area's finest chroniclers. Flora Thompson wrote um, about her life as a child growing up in the North Oxfordshire countryside. Uh, in the late 1800s in Juniper Hill, which is about nine miles from here. Could Juniper Hill be Larkrise? Juniper Hill is Larkrise. Thompson's semi-autobiographical Lark Rise to Candleford trilogy, which brilliantly evokes a now-vanished rural life, wasn't written until the 1940s, which is amazing. In a way, it's a little bit of a miracle that a child from a poor, grindingly poor background could aspire to be one of our country's most celebrated uh, local writers. Young Flora became an assistant postmistress and, with the help of the local library, taught herself to be a writer. In 1910, she won an essay competition in The Lady's Companion and, with the encouragement of her husband, soon began to earn a living with her stories, articles and poems. Was it an idyllic look? on uh, rural life in Buckinghamshire. It was a realistic look. She wrote it as it was, without, without any embellishment. The fictional Candleford was partly based on Buckingham and also inspired by another local town, which is where James is heading now. Travelling from Buckingham to Brackley. But although Brackley has more than its fair share of splendid old buildings, James's next stop certainly isn't amongst them. <laughs> this antique centre has to be in the most unusual location of any antique centre I've ever been to. I mean, it's, it's actually in the basement of the supermarket, which is slightly weird, to say the least. quality. Hobnail cut, possibly Irish. Got a pair of them. So unusual to find a pair. But I've been drilled. Some philistine has taken a drill and drilled through the side of this decanter to make a lamp base out of it. I mean, in perfect order with stoppers. Five to eight hundred pounds. Drilled, twelve quid. And even at that, not worth buying. Fortunately for James, there are plenty of other things down here, and one cabinet he just can't take his eyes off. Everything that is in here has got something about it, and he, whoever owns this cabinet, I just love, love the taste, love his eye, love what he's picked. And... It's a really good object. It's uh, silver-topped, nicely hallmarked. We have the WC 
in the funny shaped cartouche for William Cummings, which is absolutely fantastic. The bit of tall shell in the top there, known as uh, tall shell piquet, where the silver's inlaid into the tall shell top. It's got this great big deep cover that the whole thing hinges back. And then inside, a ground stopper. A lot of the time you see these called um, scent bottles, but they're not, they're for smelling salts. When this was made, which was about, I think about 1900, 1915, it was a time when ladies wore very tight corsets. And of course the tight corsets meant they couldn't breathe very well. When they're sort of feeling a little faint, you would remove the smelling salts bottle and take a bit of a whiff of that and it would bring them round and give them a new vigor. But the other thing to say, of course, is that under the 1976 CITES legislation, trade in tortoiseshell, new tortoiseshell, is illegal, and rightly so. This, though, it's been well gone for over 100 years. What could that be, do you think? I give him a call. It's a... Thank you. Again, it needs to be... A lot less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a funny little object. It's made from just stamped tin, as cheap as you can find. But it's marked HRH Prince Albert's Cashew Aromatize or Aromatease. Isn't that great? And there's a little sliding thing there that releases a hole. So I guess it's the equivalent of a, a 19th century tic-tac box. And you would shake out a little mint to refresh your breath. All right, then. Thank you. Bye. He could do that for 55. 55. I think he'd take 45 for it. We can try him. Would you give him a go for me? Yeah, please? sure. Thank you. OK. We'll take 45, that'll be... And just... Ask see, him what that is. Yeah, there doesn't be any price with it. Thank you. £45 is, is fine for it. I mean, it's, it's worth the 55, but on a bad day it might make 60. Right here, 45. OK. And he says you can have that. Really? With yes. it in the deal? Yes. <laughs> Phew, that's enough to make anyone come over all faint. A nice item at a good price, plus a free gift. It's been a busy day, you two. Good night. Day two, and we're no nearer an understanding of the rules of rugger. You know, that uh, England are winning. Oh, that's another goal for England. Hooray! <laughs> dry conversion <laughs> and penalty. You don't get goals. A dry conversion. <laughs> Yesterday, Anita hit two home runs, and no, that's not a bat, it's a page-turner. She also bought a photo album and spent just £50, leaving her with £446.72p to spend today. Take your own, dear. You can take me where you like. I'm, I'm, your, I'm yours for the day. <laughs> Whilst James kept the scorers very busy indeed, totting up a small pile of silver, a toothpick case with toothpick, a mint box and a smelling salt bottle. That little lot cost him £135, leaving £720.72p to spend today. Tis copper, isn't it? <laughs> I'd have to watch you. <laughs> they are heading for that auction in Sirencester, but starting out first in Woodstock. Not to be confused with the site of the 1969 Rock Festival, Oxfordshire's Woodstock, the name means clearing in the woods, is an altogether different sort of place. Although King Ethelred, the unready, did apparently once hold an assembly here, no mention ever of any hippies or old rockers like Anita. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. No, 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 no. Now this is a sweet wee figure, and I always like this porcelain. I love it because of the quality of the glaze. It's always highly glazed, uh, and the figures are, are wonderful. Now, what I'd like to look for buying it is that within a, a region of between 20... £25. You're not going to get it for £25. I'm not going to get it for £25. And I'm certainly not going to get it for £22. <laughs> That's fairly logical, Nita. You wear that one out pretty well. <laughs> I know, I know. 
I've got you try, mate. I've got you try. Yeah. I can do 35, which is pretty good, and I will, but that is like it. I'm not... Don't come back and say 32. If you could bring that down to maybe about 30... It would be... <laughs> what did I say to you? 35, Anita, that... Honestly, <laughs> believe me, you and I know that is all right. It is. If you are able to be persuaded... Oh, Anita, you are shameless. 32 pounds, that's it, all right? I said I wouldn't go to 32, but I'm not... <laughs> 32 pounds. There it is. Look at you. I'm tempted on it. Could you come to 30? No. 32. Should I take it? Yeah, of course. Take a punt. You'll be all right. Take a punt? OK, right, I'll take your advice, you're a darling. You're beautiful. <laughs> thank you very much. Ah, but away from the heady delights of downtown Woodstock, James is still on the road, driving from Woodstock to Kingston Bagpews. Whilst Anita's finding all the treasures of Oxfordshire, Kingston Bagpews, oh, there it is, a wonderful private home. Owned by Ginny. Hopefully we're in for a treasure here. Yeah? The place gets its curious name from the back Pui family. Normans who lived here for over 200 years after the conquest. But the current house dates mostly from the early 18th century. Ginny. It's very nice to meet you. And you. What a wonderful house. How, how did your family come to, to, to get this? Um, 1939. Um, Grace, Charlotte, Rafel, Aunt Marley to us. Aunt Marley, this, lovely. Purchased this house. 39. Now, 39's a, an incredible time to be buying a big house like this. She moved in in June and the war started in September. Gosh. Um, it was used. We had to evacuees from London Blitz upstairs. So it played its part in it the war? It played then. its part in the war and she was a special constable. Gosh. But I always think that was partly so she had fuel for her Rolls Royce. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, I mean... T t tell me about it. What, what... Well, it's this beautiful symmetry. Each window is, is balanced since this window here. Um, you can see it's boarded up because it's actually behind the staircase. Really? So they built the house yes. knowing that the staircase That's is right. going to block the window, but they put a window in there anyway? Yes. The staircase, built in the 1720s, dominates the entrance hall with a handsome, polished handrail supported on a turned balustrade. Oh, and what a staircase. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's worth yeah, blocking it up is. a window for that it, staircase. It is indeed, because, of course, this is where the window would be, just there, matching this one here. It was painted uh, until 1920 when it was stripped. I mean, the, the idea of having all this wood stripped just leaves me uh, amazed, but that's what happened. Although the house is open to the public, it remains a family home, beautifully proportioned and furnished with some very fine pieces. Quite a bit of it, French. Wow. <laughs> An amazing view. I know. Wonderful. Goodness me. So would this have been the first approach to the yes, house? Yes, until about 1860. Wow. Hey, even the trees are symmetrical. That is amazing. In the dining room, there's a portrait of Ginny's Aunt Marley when she was aged just three. And throughout the house, there are reminders of her ownership. In 1935, Marley Raphael toured the Far East and returned with a lifelong interest in all things Chinese and one very practical item. I have to say, I prefer my pillow's feather. <laughs> yes. It is as early as it looks, isn't it? Uh, yes, depending on how early you think it is. <laughs> it looks to be 14th century. Well, I think it's probably 13th. 13th, yeah. I have to say, I've seen them in books. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Woodstock, Anita's taking a keen interest in some blue plates, but they're not Chinese. These are German, so they're pre-1914. They're transfer printed and they don't have huge quality. It's the type of thing that if you can get it for the right price, then it might do well in the sale room. And we've got a pair. That's important. I love cabinets like this and I love little figures and I'm being immediately drawn to that sweet little clown. Isn't he a wee darling? He's a darling. Quite nicely moulded, good colour, good condition. Look at these toes here. 
They are so vulnerable, but they're in perfect condition. It's Rosenthal. Good German make. Probably from about the 1930s. Watch out, Mike. Anita's coming back for more. So, we've got three items yeah. here. These Victorian or Edwardian, right. no quality at all, churned out, yep. transfer printed. So, but we have got a pair there. Yep. And let me see this wee guy. How's about, will you sell me him for a tenner? <laughs> yeah, great. I was, there I was, I was thinking, I'm going to say yes to whatever you say, Anita, right. because that's fair enough. Uh, a tenner. For a Rosenthal clown. Uh, Rosenthal isn't a big deal. And the other thing is, see these toes, they're in perfect condition now. If I buy these, I have to transport them to the auction. These are so vulnerable. And they're vulnerable in the area, all these people getting in and out of the I've heard it all now. So <laughs> I've got to be responsible for your transporting them. <laughs> I'll tell on. you what, I'll chuck in a load of bubble wrap and do his little toes up. Uh, how about... <laughs> you can have these two, Rob Tanner. Hey, huh? There's no damage in them, is there? No, no, no. So you sell me them for a tenner? I will indeed. You give me the two of them for 20 quid. Right. You're saying 20, and I'm saying 10. Right. Make it 25. Go on, do it, the, the both of them, for, uh, for 20. Twenty quid. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's only because uh, it's my last buy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great yeah, yeah. stuff, Anita. Oh look, James is on his way, hoping to spend some of that pile of his. I'm looking for the town hall. Um, ah, is this it? The town hall apparently has an antique sale on. The great thing about antiques fairs is that many of the dealers you find there don't have shops, so their stock arrives fresh to the market and longing for a buyer. Sometimes with a beard. Can I see the mirror, please? This is a Rococo revival easel dressing table mirror. It's so, something I fell in love with, because it's, it, I mean, you, you just don't see mirrors of that scale. What is it, 1900, 1910? Uh, like 19, 1903, William Cummins. William Cummins. William Cummins. Yeah. Uh, I've just bought a little smelling salts bottle, um, previously by William Cummins. A good maker. What could that be? What would it be? Uh, well, I've got six, <coughs> 695 on it, so oh. I'd, I'd be looking for... Um, 500? Gosh, 500 pounds. Is he about to take a huge gamble on the very, very last day? What would be your rock bottom on it? 425. Got little tiny bits of damage yeah. on the Which edge. I, I'd be worried if there wasn't, to be honest. Yeah, this, it's true. <laughs> yeah, very good point. It's 100 years old, isn't yeah. it? 400 rock bottom. Go on. You've got over 700 pounds, James. I'd be looking more around 320, something like that. Couldn't, couldn't do it, James. Sorry. No? No. 340, any good? No, I, I, sorry, I couldn't. There's... No. no, no uh, Can you move a little bit? No, for, forward. Is, I've, is the I've death. moved considerably, yeah. I think, on that. OK. Of what I think it's... it's I don't think we're going to get there. Shame, because I like it. Yeah, so do I. It's a, it's a big lump. And the best best maker you like to find, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There we go. All right. Mm, it's too much for me. You'll yeah, regret it. <sighs> oh, such a nice mirror. <laughs> I love it. I really do. Last offer, three hundred and eighty quid. Go on then. 380 quid. You've got a deal. My God. Well what done. What have I done? <laughs> Thank you very much. You. I'm going to go and have a swift gin and tonic. Thank you.
But before turning to drink, he's nipped into the shop that Anita almost emptied earlier. What's left then, James? Now, obviously, they're silver. They're obviously tortoiseshell. They're Hallmark 1913. OK. They've got a price on them of £65. And I could be yours, sir, uh, £30. £30. All these little silver-mounted clothes brushes aren't going to make me a huge profit. They're not going to be anything that excites the auction room. Um, I've spent some whacking great money on that mirror, and I think I just need to play it a little bit safe with the last purchase. For less than £30, they're worth buying. You said 30. Would you do them at 20? Silver's just gone up a couple, and I've just checked them for a little while, but <laughs> I do 25. There's not a lot of silver on them. There's two, 25 for tall to shell and silver. They're going to be all right at that, aren't they? 22 quid, you got a deal. Oh, cool, that's it. You've it's got a done. deal. That's Thank you very I'm much. Right. OK. Well done, you. Now, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, really. What did they buy? The first thing that I brought, you know, I rated it so much, I didn't even wrap it. Oh. <laughs> what, is that a load of old tin? Not far off. All right. I mean, it's not sort of making my temperature rise. No, nor mine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they're worth? The, the pencil, I thought... Ten, fifteen pounds. Mm, is that it? Mm. Well, did that you think th more? I thought maybe twenty. Sometimes I'm a wee bit conservative. You're mean. You're mean, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> so anyway, there we go. Well, I'll show you my first item. I like photograph items, and I think this is a particularly nice one. Mm -hmm. We have maybe 50 or 60 family photographs in um, there. What did you pay? £30. Oh, blimey. Well, I think that's 15 love to you. Well, OK, deja vu all over again. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lovely wee thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely gorgeous. But I, th I seem to remember that I lost money on mine. It's 25 quid. Oh, James. Yeah. How did you get that for 25 quid? I offered him 25 pounds and he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> A sincerest form of flattery, they say. What will he make of her page turner? Back to your Art Nouveau inspiration. <laughs> That's your favourite period, isn't it? I know. <laughs> but I think it's quite a sweet thing. How much was that? £20. Pounds. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Good. OK. How about James's smelly items? Oh, yes. That's lovely. Tortoiseshell yeah. top, yeah. inlaid with silver. Yeah. Condition is so important in Perfect. this type of item. Perfect. I love that, and I would have that in my dressing table. Well, that would grace anybody's dressing table or bijouterie cabinet, wouldn't it? I, I mean, I really like that. But it came with this. Oh, no, here it goes again. <laughs> yep, well, that's so what So what I are you going to do with it? I don't know. It's Prince Albert's Breath Freshening Mints. If you've got something else, you can put that with. I mean, you might even be able to put it with your wee silver things, but that should be on its own. Yeah. Now, Sage advice, Anita. Uh, this wee uh, cheeky chappy captured my imagination. He's great. I like him. You like him? Yeah. What did he pay? Ten pounds. You are joking. Do you think that's a good price, James? <laughs> Do you <laughs> think that, uh, you know that's a good price? <laughs> don't you? Have a look in you. Where those brushes are daft by? Um, I like these. I would like them better if they were in a case, but I think yeah. that these pro ones were probably part of a bigger set. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Watch out, James. Next. More figurines. Oh, little Ladro. No, it's uh, Royal Copenhagen, pre-1950s, and I think the subject matter is charming. Mm. The little child with her, her doll rocket. Is that, it doesn't... No, it's not for you. No. But, I mean, people will find that appealing and charming. She'd have been much nicer if been holding a rabbit or something like that. A rabbit. <laughs> now, wait for this. And James, I, that is a very impressive piece. Do we have a maker? It's William Cummins. Right. So, again, it's a very good maker. So, I blew £380 on this lot. Ooh. It'll either crash and you'll overtake me in the last lot. <laughs> or... Fingers crossed, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> or it might just take me over a £1,000 profit. I don't know. You like how you gamble? <laughs> Not normally, no. <laughs>
OK, uh, next item. It's a pair of blue and white wall plaques. All oh, right. They're German, from before mm. the First World War. They're not bad, James. No. But they're not great. No, 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 absolutely. And blue and white has gone out of fashion a wee bit. Yeah, well, how much were they? A tenner. Oh! <laughs> They've got to be worth more than that. It has been wonderful, James, and I have oh. loved it. Give me a big <laughs> kiss. Oh. How sweet. Time to get the knives out. Anita has done a classic Anita trick. She's been so careful. There is no risk there whatsoever. And she's bought some nice little buys. This last leg and the last reveal has been very, very interesting. It may show us that the show isn't over until the fat lady sings. That sounds like a battle cry, if ever I've heard one. After starting out in Woburn, this final leg of our trip will conclude in Sirencester. Here we are, James, our very last auction. Mm. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you too. I feel really quite sad. <laughs> you sentimental oh. old fool. <laughs> <laughs> and so, while Sirencester folk take a closer look at the lots, let's hear what auctioneer Philip Allwood thinks of what Anita and James have bought. Rosenthal Clown, uh, a good-looking piece of Art Deco-style porcelain. I'd expect it to make 50, 80 pounds, that sort of area, to a collector. Well, then we come to the mirror, which is by far and away the best piece. A good example, uh, and I think I put eight to 1,200 on it. Should be around that sort of level. Anita began with £496.72p, and she spent a total of £102 on five auction lots. Don't let my smells make any difference All right, to you. Oh, they're 30 quid. <laughs> James started out with £855.72p and he spent £537 also on five lots. My God, what have I done? <laughs> Anita's hopes may be faint, but because James spent so much on that mirror, right now she has more cash. So James, whitewash or Anita comeback? Now she's teeing off. Right, you know. Here we cool. go. <laughs> the uh, German uh, oval pottery wall plates there, 30, 40 pounds. 20 to get on, got to be 20 pounds. Oh, on, go on, go on. A tenner, 10 oh. pounds, got to be 10 pounds, surely. Anybody, 10 pounds. 10 on bid there, the lady at 10 pounds. 12 would you like now? <laughs> 12, 15, 18, 20 to mean 20. At 20 pounds, at 20 pounds. Right in front of me then still, at 20 pounds, you all sure? 20 oh, yeah. All that adrenaline Two, over 20 four, quid. <laughs> <laughs> well, she won't topple James like that, I can tell you. I was a wee bit worried when he started the door. Now, what will this little bottle do? If it makes 80, I'm happy. If it makes 120, and I'm And lot number 127. <laughs> and uh, I can start you here on the book at £40 only. At £40 out here. At £40 at 5 50 Five, sixty, five, seventy. At seventy with me. Five now. Five, eighty. Five, ninety. Five. Go Looks on. out of ninety-five. One hundred now. At ninety-five. One hundred. Thank you. Go on. One ten meter. Go on. Go on. Have another year now. One ten. Oh, am I going to be ecstatic? Now. At one ten. On. One twenty to me now, sir. One twenty. Oh, yes, one that's it. One thirty if you like. At one twenty. On my left. At one twenty. One thirty. That's a at good one thirty. One forty now. At 130 pounds, right 130. 130 it is. Ecstatic, James. That's, that's, that's good. I'm, I'm pleased with that. And yep, that's a great result, putting him in the lead. And next is my favourite of yours. The Rosenthal figure of a clown. Ice lovely. Uh, and I can start you on the book here at 50 pounds only, at 50 oh, o'clock. Well, 5, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80. At 80 pounds with me, five, Go 90, on. five, 100. At 100 on. pounds here, five, 110, 120. The book's out at 120 on my right now, 130. At 130 pounds, you all sure now, then at 130. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant, well done. Yeah. Now that is a cracking result, isn't it? Yes, Anita's back in the race. Next lot yeah. is your mixed lot. Uh, yeah, that... 30, 40 pounds. I, I don't 20 know. pounds I think... for the two. Four and James. A tenner. <laughs> Ten pounds, two feet. Ten, I'm bid there. 
Well, possibly. I see that thanks to Anita, the mint box has been included. Hat £50 I have here. 55, 60, 5, 70 with me. Hat £70, 5 now. 5, 80, 5, 90, 5, 100, and 10. Hat 110, 120 now. Here on the book, then, up 110. 110. Knew it all along. I'll eat my one. <laughs> <laughs> James is narrowly in the lead. I think he managed to square me at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at square me. <laughs> now for Anita's photo album. It will start me 50, 20 pound, 20 pound a bit there, 5, 30, 5, 40, 5, 50, 5. At 55 on my left now, 55, 60 now. At 55 pounds on my left here then. At 55 pounds, you all sure? 2.30. Uh, there was no persuading him, was there? Goal, <laughs> <laughs> one, six, I saw him. Yeah. Nothing to get too excited about, though. No, I think he did well at 55. And, uh, I'm happy. Next, the hygienic ear and tooth-picking device. Toothpick uh, and ear spoon. There we go, a combination ear spoon. <laughs> <laughs> at 30, pound a bit there at 30. Five, if you like, now. Five, 40, five, 50, five, 60. <laughs> At 60 pounds, it's selling right in front of me here. Five, 65, 70, anyone out? 70. Ooh. Five. Oh. At 75 pounds, how could you do without an ear spoon? At 75 pounds, you all sure? 75. And he did well. He that did was well. The right place for yeah, it. it was. He did yeah. well there. Keeps him out in front. No, 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 absolutely pounds. happy with that. Now, all the way from Copenhagen. Got to start you at 18 only. At 18 on the book here. Oh. At 18, take 20 now. At 18 pounds, 20, 2, 25. The book's out at 25, 30 now. 30, 5. At 35 on my left here. 35, 40 now anywhere. At 35 pounds, it's on my left then at 35. 319. Told you. <coughs> rabbit. Oh, oh, rabbit. <laughs> Been better with a rabbit. <laughs> a loss after commission. Stop rabbiting on. <laughs> Will your brushes do much better, James? £30 to get off. 20 then. Nice little pair of clothes brushes at £20. There's no dog owners in here. A tenner. Oh, come on. Give me a I agree with you. £10. At £10 I'll be dead. Thank you, madam. 10, 12. Oh, <laughs> 15, 18. At £18, 20 if you like now. 20. At £20, you all sure now. Stop laughing. 25. <laughs> At 25, go on, 30 now, sir. Go on. 25 <laughs> pounds, you all done. 25. Oh, 25. Disaster. <laughs> they were a lot of junk. They were. <laughs> <laughs> she has a point. <laughs> Going off you rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> Anita's back in it, but could she thrash him with this? Here it is, here it is. 20. 10 to get on, got to be a tenner. Five pound and five and bid there, seven. At seven, ten. 12, 15, at 15 in the back now, 15, 18 if you like now. At 50, Go 18, on. 20, yes. 2, 25, 28, 28, 30 now, at 28, 30, 5, 40, at 40 pound it is 5, at 45, I'm all right at 45, 50 now, at 45 pounds, you all sure. 45 it is. That's a good well result. Done. I well think you done. helped well along as well, James. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's double your money. A good turn, but will it be enough? Do you know whatever happens? Uh, five. This road trip nine. has been the best time ever. Third. I've, I've loved it, you know. Five, Absolutely three. loved it. It's been great fun. You get lipstick. Big guy. <laughs> 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 really enjoyed it. That's enough of that canoodling. It's all down to James's biggest ever spend. They're neck and neck, but even a modest return on the mirror will give him overall victory. Start me five to get on. Three hundred pounds for the mirror. The William Cummins mirror there for three hundred pounds only. Two hundred. Two hundred a bit. Thank you. At two hundred. At two hundred pounds. Two twenty now. If you like two twenty. Go on. Two forty if you like. Two forty. Two sixty. At two sixty here. Two sixty. Two eighty. At 280, 300 if you like now. At 280, 300 now then. At 280. No way. At 280. At 200, it's selling here. 280, 300. 320. It's selling here at 320 pounds. 340. 360. 380. 400. At 400. Still not. 400 pounds. It's selling though. You all sure? 400 it is. <sighs> well, it's a loss.
<laughs> yes, after commission, someone has got themselves a huge bargain. Five, Knew it was a seven, gamble. Five, five, James wins the war, but today's little battle goes to Anita. After paying auction costs, Anita's made a profit of £131.70, p. so she has a very respectable final total of £628.42. p. James, on the other hand, made, after auction costs, just £69.80 p today, but he's finished up with an excellent £925.52 p for the week. And remember, all those profits go to children in need. The last auction, dear me. It's been great fun. I've enjoyed every minute, you know.